everybody, Richard here from Sodak Motorcycle Blog, uh, coming to you from South Dakota once again. As I am sitting home here at work on a Wednesday, late Wednesday morning, patiently waiting the arrival of, I think they're calling this one Winter Storm Omer, uh, whatever crazy bomb cyclone, whatever the heck it is. Uh, we got work called off today. Actually, we went in for about a half an hour and they told us to go home. Uh, they're kind of worried about it. The snow has not started yet, but I'm sure it's going to be coming. So, but uh, so in the meantime, we'll get another video out to everybody. I know you've been waiting. It's been about a month since, or over a month since the last one. So I'm sorry for being so slow on it. But honestly, the weather's kind of sucked for the last six weeks, and I haven't done any work on the bike or anything like that. So it's just kind of been slow, and I apologize for that. But hopefully things will. We'll uh, ramp up here soon. But anyways, as we do wait for the impending doom of Winter Storm Ulmer, I'm going to just give you a couple uh, lists I made of just a couple do's and don'ts for this year's riding season. Um, obviously, spring is coming. Um, and like I said, this is my top do's and don'ts. So, let's start with the don'ts. First of all, don't blame the car for everything. Yes, they're on their phone and yes they're not paying attention and yes they do stupid things but here's the thing that's not gonna change uh, personal responsibility is the key I'm very big on personal responsibility and you know as far as personal responsibility goes the only thing she should do is use good road strategy um, on YouTube there's a blog it's called MC Writer it's ran by Kevin Morris, and he has some really good information, and it's one of the big things he preaches is proper road strategy. And with that, and that's just something I'm going to highlight, but, you know, with your personal responsibility, practice your emergency braking. If you don't practice it in a controlled situation, you're not going to do it the right way in the situation when you've got to do it without thinking. You know, one of the reasons why in the military we do or when the military we did so many of the same task over and over and over and over and over again was to get it to the point where you just do it without instinct and you don't have to think about it but uh, another part of, of the personal responsibility is make sure you're using good equipment enough said easy enough but like I said make stop I I get it the cagers are you know they're they're out to get us or whatever all that stuff but here's the deal like I said Personal responsibility will go a long way. A lot of crashes, including my own, which I've included a link to talking about my crash, uh, the video I did last year. Um, go back and take a look at that if you've never checked it out before. So those of you who have seen it before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I know that one could have been prevented. You know, a little bit of better road strategy and maybe a little bit of patience. And in the end, if you could be right on the bike all day long, yeah. You might have had the right away at that stop sign. But guess what? That pickup that didn't stop, that you could have stopped for and let him go through, well, that pickup just run you right over. So in the end, you being in the right, that's not going to keep you alive. You know, I guess they could put that on your, your tomb soon. You know, I had the, you know, I had the right away or something like that. But in the end, like I said, it doesn't matter because, you know, that... <laughs> It isn't going to help you any one bit. Some like easy, too easy things here. Don't ride drunk. Don't ride under the influence of, of any drugs. Just that, that's too easy there. I mean, you already need your instincts the way it is. Why would you, why, why are you going to, you know, hamper them even more by being completely drunk? You know, and also don't be a jerk. It's pretty easy. Enough said. You know, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a total jerk. You know, just go out there and ride and enjoy yourself. If you're not a jerk to everybody, you know, you might you might find out that your ride might be a little bit better, and everybody else around you is going to enjoy you too. Because if you ride with other people and you're a jerk and they know you're a jerk, they're going to start getting annoyed with you and they're probably not going to ride with you much anymore. Another thing, do not, and I say do not ignore a biker in need of help. You know, just think of it this way: if you were stranded, it really sucked to get. Uh, or no one not to stop and help you, especially if they ride a motorcycle. That I, I, that's got to be that's kind of a sinking feeling. Uh, this has happened to me once before. Uh, we were actually riding with a friend of ours, and I let him take the lead. Well, because thinking because they had 
they'd spent the whole ride, just could not keep up with me, struggling, struggling, struggling. Well, I let them take the lead, and apparently they just, I don't know what the heck they got into, but they just, they just took off. And in the meantime of trying to stay with them, well, I ended up running out of fuel. And I had the V-Star, and I'm like, oh, no problem. We're just going to go and flip the Petcock. Well, I went to flip the pot, Petcock back to, to the reserve tank. Unfortunately, it was on the reserve tank. So there I was, out of fuel, 10 miles from Sundance. And the person I was riding with, nowhere to be seen. Didn't come back, didn't come back. You know, managed to get some fuel from uh, a rancher. It was about half a mile away. So he gave us some fuel, which was very nice of him. Got us back to Sundance. Well, this happened at about, it was probably about, 10:30 on a Saturday, and my wife finally uh, the the people the couple we were riding with finally uh, uh, his wife the wife called us or called her about five o'clock on Sunday night to see if we'd made it home okay. So, yeah, definitely not a fun feeling to get uh, to get left behind by somebody, you know. So make sure you're stopping and, and help them out. I. I know they say the 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 one the, the the universal sign for it is um, you put uh, there's a helmet down behind the rear tire. I've also seen front tire of the bike. Um, basically, that's a sign of distress. Either way, I don't know what the sign is. You know what the sign is exactly, but in the end, if you see a bike pulled over side of the road and it looks like maybe they're having some problems, you know at least slow down. Maybe see if you get a thumbs up from them. See if you're okay or whatever. Just because, like I said, you never know. They might need some help. And the other reason to do it too is you build up some karma points because if you ignore someone in need, that may come around to bite you someday when someone doesn't stop when you're in need. Uh, another thing on the don't side of the house is don't skimp on your safety gear. If you have a helmet, wear the thing. You know what, going back to personal responsibility, you know what, I'll wear my helmet. You can choose not to wear yours, that's fine. But uh, here's something to think about with not wearing like the helmet is okay yeah you're going 80 down the freeway yeah you're getting ahead on yep you're not probably not going to make it however to get on that freeway you didn't just take a right turn on your driveway uh you went through some residential streets um, a lot of places where it's 50 miles an hour 20 miles an hour you know 35 so what happens if you're going down your little residential street and going 15 miles an hour kid jumps in front of you he panic you lock up your front tire because you don't have it. You're not stopping the straight way because you haven't. I mean, a lot of things here, but you haven't. You know, worked on your emergency braking. You fall off your bike. Now you crack your skull open, and yeah, you, you know, you you might be okay, but you might have some uh, some uh, damage, some brain damage, and honestly, it, you know, a fall like that is is enough without a protected head to to really do some serious damage. You possibly even kill you. You know, just something to think about when you're wearing a helmet. But like I said, if you do have a helmet, make sure it's it's good, it's properly certified. Make sure it's got at least, a, you know, make sure it's got DOT, EC, Snell certification. Um, obviously, if you're riding on a bike in North America, or I don't know about North America, but if you're riding on the bike in the States and you're in a state that requires you to have a DOT approved helmet, make sure it's obviously a DOT approved helmet. Um, that's too easy there. Uh, DOT is a required standard. Now on these sites, like you can go to DOT's website, you can go to Snell's website, um, and also UK has a website, it's called Sharp, and that's one I use a lot. Um, you can punch in your helmet and you can get a full report of what's, what was done. Uh, big thing with DOT, it's kind of a self-certification standard and they, you know, they'll pick and choose. So, you know, if you stay, but if you're staying with kind of the known brands, you know, HJC, Bell, RE, Showy, uh, all you know, kind of the known brands. They're generally they're generally a good way to go for you. But uh, like I said, make sure you got pro a good helmet, proper helmet. You wear it, and also you know, make sure you're wearing some kind of safety gear as well. Like you probably want to be wearing boots on a bike instead of wearing like you might not want to wear your flip flops and your shorts while you're riding. You know, just saying. In a perfect world, you'd be you'd, you'd be doing all the gear all the time. And I know you're all the gear all the time. Guys are gonna start piping up about you know about it and which is great that's you know they're obviously the safe ones out there i mean i can understand if you don't wear it all the time but you know at least make an attempt at least try to to wear the right gear at the right time and don't skimp on it let's go to some dudes um uh, first thing take a writing course if you haven't started writing yet take the take the basic writing course it's either a whole weekend or some evenings 
and you pay, I believe it's, it's around the $100 range for the MSF version. And they provide you the bike and you get to go learn. They teach you everything about how to operate the machine. And they teach you well enough that when it's all said and done and you've got that certificate and that riding test done from that class, you can take it down to your DMV and you'll get a, pay, your life, pay your money to the state and you get your license. You know, that's a lot easier than kind of what I did when I first started riding, which was, well, I uh, found a cheap bike and my father-in-law took me around and I learned just enough to take the driving test. And honestly, the driving test in South Dakota is you go around the block. And you put your hand up in the air when they, you know, when the car or the, the chase car turns on its turn signals. It wasn't really a robust test here in the state of South Dakota. There's lots of other states it is. But uh, here's the thing in the end. If you can take the class and get it done there, that's the way to do it. I wish that would have been available to me back when I first started to ride, but it just wasn't. Um, if you've done basic, the first one, do the basic too. That one, ideally, you do, you're do. you supposed to do it, if I remember right, six months after your basic. And that's where you bring in your bike that you have bought, and you learn how to operate that machine. And it's basically the same course. Um, I believe it's not a pass and fail deal. It's more of doing the exercises there. So, like, you won't fail if you, you touch the ground doing the box drill and all that stuff. But uh, that's the one I took. And when I did that, I did it seven years after I started riding, or eight years after I started riding. And I'd had my V-Star for seven years at that point, and I learned more in seven hours that day than I'd learned about that V-Star in, in seven years. So it's very important. If you've done both of them and you, it's available to you, take the Expert or the Sport Bike course. They're essentially the same course. I, I believe the stipulation is, is who's teaching it and what to, what you know what's, it, what's the target audience that they write on for the class. But... Uh, the biggest difference there is once you go to expert, um, you're not doing like the box drill or anything like that anymore. And the speed goes from about 15 to 20 for the basic to now you're doing 25 to 35 for the advanced course. And you're doing a lot more stuff at speed. And actually the, the advanced course is a lot of fun to do. It And it's, I believe basic two and the advanced course are both around $60 mark. And like I said, I would definitely take advantage of that because like I said, it's kind of fun. And when I did that with my 1500, I, I really learned a lot about how good that 1500 really is. And I actually plan on doing it now that I bought the 1800 this year again because I've got a different bike. You know, I, I need to learn how to run that bike. And that's the same thing for you. If you've just upgraded a bike or if you got a different bike this year, or if, you, you've, or if you're one of those lucky people that have added a bike to the fleet, you know what? Take that and go do the do the expert class or the basic two with that bike, just so you can get a good feel of what that machine's going to do. Because every machine's different. And like I said, if it's been three years since you've taken course, take it again. Um, I know one individual that I I've rode with in the past, and they've taken all these classes about ten years ago. And every time I harp about taking classes, they like to remind me, "Well, I took that ten years ago." Blah blah blah. Which is all fine and good, but. Here's the deal. It's still good to go refresh those skills every once in a while. It's 60 bucks, but I think it's 60 bucks well spent. Another thing you should be doing this year is using good road strategy. I talked about MC Rider um, with uh, Kevin Morris. You know that. Go to that blog on YouTube. Uh, you'll see me post a few videos here every once in a while from him, and just some really, really good information for you to use while you're riding. And um, they also have ways you can go be a patron for them. Uh, you get, get access to their writing guide. Um, and I would go check them out because, like I said, they're a pretty good website and they got a lot of good information. I really like I, I like Kevin's mentality on writing. Like he thinks of it from the approach of, hey, you know, it's all about you. He doesn't go and blame everyone else. Although he has made a video recently um, saying what he wished that – which he wishes he could tell every car driver about riding a motorcycle. But in the end, still, it's, he's very much about personal responsibility and doing the things that you can to prevent those accidents. Um, and with that, you need to take care of your machine. Preventative maintenance is a lot easier than breaking down a thousand miles from home. Um, one big thing, like if you're going to take a big trip and your tires are kind of worn out, you know, maybe change them before. Uh, a friend of mine found that out by spending eight hours and uh, about $800 in Maine one day to put new tires on his Goldwing because instead of replacing them beforehand, like I had, I had told him he should do, 
because we had this discussion about, hey, my tires are getting kind of worn. And I was like, well, go replace them. He's like, oh, they'll be fine. Well, unless you want to be broke down in the middle of nowhere for eight hours waiting on tires to get done, or worse yet, let's say you're stuck in a place where they don't, where you're nowhere near a motorcycle dealership. You know, he was fortunate. He was about five miles from a town that had a motorcycle dealership in it. So he was okay, but chances are you're not going to be so lucky. So change those tires for long tips, you know, change, you know, do all your maintenance before you go. There's why, why stop in the middle of the trip somewhere and get the maintenance done. That just, it doesn't make sense to me. And lastly, with that, if something on the bike doesn't feel right, make sure you're checking it out. Learned that lesson last year too, and not the hard way, hard way because it worked out. But riding to work one morning, I pulled into the parking lot, and the last few turns I made, man, the front end was really heavy. So I get off and I check the pressure in the front tire, and it read 20 pounds. It's normally set at 40, so that made me think, well, oh, well, I found out I needed a new valve stem, but. I'm really glad that I checked it out because if I wouldn't have checked it out, you know, being it was summer, who knows, riding home from work that day in the mid 90s with that heat, that heat on that tire, and that tire is, you know, probably would have been even lower by then. Who knows what would have happened to me on the road that night. So if something don't feel right, check it out. If your gut saying something's not right, check it out. Because in the end, it's much better to be safe than sorry. And you don't want to be sitting there in the hospital bed all, all broken up. You know, thinking, you know what, I should have trusted my gut on that one. So make sure you're taking care of your machine. Plan your summer trips now. Um, if you don't have one planned and you're planning on taking one, make sure you kind of get those plans squared away. Now, if you're one of those just kind of wing it type people, then yeah, you ain't got to worry about this. But if you're like me and you got a, a boss to keep happy or my, my wife, the same thing, where she needs her leave time in in December of the year before, you know, make sure you're getting your leave taken or your your time off lined up so you can actually have the time off. Um, if you like the hotels, definitely get those hotel reservations now. They tend to fill up, especially you know in areas where the big rallies are, or or uh, in like Americade, Wingding, stuff like that. I know Surge is here; they fill up pretty quick. So make sure that you're taking care of those reservations now. Uh, last year in March last year before our Montana trip last year I was making our hotel reservations and I'm glad that I did because we ended up having to change one closer to the end and I think we added we, we almost doubled the hotel bill because we had to change that later on to a different to a different room so make sure you're getting them now generally you get your best of deals now so make sure you're doing that and planning them out you know and like I said get your time off lined up and that way you kind of get a plan, you know, think of some rides. Um, you can look ahead, look like, oh, hey, there's a cool place to go. Here's a cool place to go. You can get on on a motorcycle blog, but hey, I'm looking at going here. Where are some good rides in the area? You know, that's kind of something about now. Plus, it's kind of fun when you look outside and all you see is snow and you can say to your computer, go, hey, that would be cool. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's do this. You know, so it kind of, to me, it helps me get through the winter a little bit better. Um, another thing with that, find a new road to ride. I know with me, sometimes it's like, I'm just, you know, you've read the same roads enough and we got great roads around here, but it's, you know, sometimes it kind of sucks, you know, you get kind of, you know, bored with it a little bit. So find a, a new road or a new place to go. Uh, this year, me and my wife are going to ride down the car hinge. It's like three hours. It's through a lot of, not a lot in Nebraska, you know, Western Nebraska. I mean, it's still beautiful in its own way, but, uh, you know what, we've never been to Car Hinge before, and it'll be fun because we're going to go someplace new. You know, kind of like last year when we went up to the North Dakota Badlands. We'd never been there before. It was someplace new to go, and it was kind of cool and kind of fun. Actually, it wasn't kind of fun. It was fun because you're on the bike. Um, another thing you should do, get involved in your local motorcycle scene. I know pretty much everywhere has a bike night of some kind. You know, go check out a bike night. You know, find a club or a riding group around your area you can get involved in you know, or, you know, find a charity group, something like that, and, you know, get involved, you know, get involved in some local poker runs, you know, that's, that's a good, some of those are a good way to, for my next point is, um, say hello to a fellow biker, I've had some of my best conversations, um, just meeting random people on the road, you know, when I was riding my motorcycle, you know, it's more enjoyable, you know, learning, you know, seeing new people and talking with them, I think, you know, Another tip I saw is, you know, when you go inside a restaurant, you know, instead of packing that helmet on that bike, 
take that helmet in with you. Set it on the table beside you. Chances are someone else, some other bike will come up and start a conversation with you. <laughs> you know, like I said, you never, you'll never know, you know, some of the cool people you meet if you don't try to go meet them. Another thing is you want to keep informed, and I'm talking about this on like the le- the, the law side of the house, uh, what your government's doing side of the house. Uh, the American Motorcyclists Association, um, they have this thing, it's called, uh, well, they have these action centers, they have federal action centers, state action centers, and, and also local action centers. You can sign up from alerts for calls to action about motorcycling. Um, you know, a lot of this with the E15 being pushed now. If you're if you're very much against E15, then you need to be signed up for this. So because they provide you information about how to get a hold of your your representatives and your uh, and your senators. So get there, sign up for that. Um, if you're if you like I said, if you're at all concerned about your rights, you know this is the place to go. Um, like I said, they have state and local action centers, and big thing with them is they're out there to protect your right to ride. And they're also air advocate for you. Stuff like um, dead red lights. If you don't know what those are, that's when the red light won't trip because you're on your bike. Well, there are several states that have those laws. Several states don't. If you're in a state that doesn't have one of those laws and you would like that to be put on the books, well, guess what? You can go here for information about how to get a hold of your state, you know, your people from your state to start that. Um, white lining. If you want a white line, same deal. This is how you. This is one of the places you you can go to get information on that. You know about how to get involved to you know have someone advocating for it. So, but um, so another thing, make sure you enjoy it. Those of us up north right now, we're looking at snow still. You know we we know this all too well. So when it's spring and summer and we're riding again, make sure you're trying. You're enjoying every last minute of it because if you don't. You'll be living a whole bunch of regret once October hits and November hits and you got to park the bike. And with that, make sure you're being safe. Because being safe is the most important thing. So, make sure you go out, you're enjoying the season. We talked about the do's and don'ts. Um, so, I got a couple reviews here. First of all, if you're... Now this is for the, your Goldwing folks there. So if you got an 05, an older Goldwing, you got 1500 or an 1800, and well, you know, you've got your GPS on there, which is fine. You've got it on your ML, works good, but you can't hear it in your intercom. And so you're sitting there and you gotta look at the GPS nonstop to try to tell you where you're going. What if you could hear that through your intercom? Well, I have a solution and it's called, uh, this is called a, it's a GPS uh, wing input. You have to forgive me here, I'm kind of doing this off my, my camera there. But uh, it's made by Halsco Group. Um, you can get it from goldwingdocs.com. And basically what this device does is it plugs into your uh, intercom system through these white plugs here. Um, you'll notice in there, there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little three and a half millimeter jack in there that plugs right into your phone. And once you do that, you can, if you got like your cell phone like me, I pop up my Here app and I've got turn by turn directions in my intercom. It's like having a a second or third person on the bike with you. And it works really good. I had one of these on the 1500 and I I loved it. Now the reason why I bought this so quick, because I was gonna wait, but last month when they sent out their newsletter, um, they made the comment that uh, the the guy who makes these, uh, his supplier isn't making the parts for him anymore. So he isn't going to be able to make too many more of these things. So if you want something like this, and better get on it now before he runs out of parts because he has no plans of relearning how to make it and putting out a, a different product. This is pretty much going to be it. So when he's out of the parts to make these, he's done. So if you want one of these, Get on there now, get it bought, it's about 67 bucks, and let me tell you, it's $67 well spent. Also, another thing I'd like to shout out to, I'd like to give a shout out to RevZilla. Uh, those of you who don't know what RevZilla is, they're basically just a massive, they got all kinds of motorcycle parts, and they've got, and, and, and accessories, and they got everything from cheap parts, they got the high end stuff. And so last, so a few weeks ago, I ordered a helmet for my wife. And we got a good price on it, and we ordered it. 
got it home and she tried it on. It fit good. Everything worked on it. I went to install our JNM intercom, you know, with the clamp mount on it, and she went to put it back on after I was done and could not get the helmet on her head. And I thought, well, this this really sucks because now we've just bought a, a helmet, you know. And like I said, I didn't put any. I didn't, it wasn't a stick on, it was a clamp on and all that. I didn't do any other modifying on the helmet. I basically just put in the intercom. Well, so I call them on a Monday to do the return. And it was basically, I called them, explained the situation, and they said, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll do a return for you. Like there was no other, like there was no other questions asked. It was just done. And they basically asked if I wanted the label sent to me, which I did. Um, normally they'll charge us, they'll take $7.99 off the refund for that, which I would recommend doing it anyway because it was, it's like really fast shipping because I dropped it. UPS comes to where I work, so UPS picked it up on Tuesday afternoon and I had the money back in my account by Saturday. And it went from Rapid City to Las Vegas and money got back in my account in, you know, not even four days. So... You know, I think that shipping's definitely worth it right there if you got paid for it. But what was nice about this time, they caught me with shipping because it was my first return. So that was pretty cool of them. But uh, I would definitely recommend them. Their customer service is top notch. So if you and if you got like if you got questions about helmet size or if you're in between size, you know, call them and they have people there. I believe from nine o'clock Eastern until ten p.m. Eastern. I believe five or five days a week or six days a week. And like I said, they're they're more than helpful, and I would definitely recommend them to anybody. But uh, anyways, so and like I said, you know, check that. So maybe check them out. Uh, maybe the gear that you, you know, maybe you need, um, check them out. Um, once again, like on every endorsement I've made so far, it's I'm not getting paid for these. It's just I I like to tell people about good products. I mean, I definitely love getting endorsement business eventually. Um, However, we're, we're still a little small, so you know I can't really bring in a lot of ad revenue yet. But uh, anyways, you take it easy, and hopefully spring comes to you shortly enough so you can get back on that bike. And uh, hopefully we'll have a few more videos here in a few weeks, and hopefully they've got me on a motorcycle in them because that'll mean we're back in riding season. But anyways, be safe, take it easy, and enjoy this riding season, and we'll see you next time on the Sodec Motorcycle Blog.